The next example is an example from an exam from 2010 of an assembly drawing. And the question reads that there are two views that we need to draw. First, they ask for an external principal view and a section right-hand view. And the section is illustrated on the schematic layout of the assembly. The section is through the center of the tension wheel and the arm hinge. So the schematic will be given to you in the exam or with these questions, and that looks like this. So we have these two views that they are asking us for, an external principal view and a section right-hand view. And when you use this layout, that already helps you when you're starting to assemble the different parts so you can have an idea of how this final component needs to look. So your final drawing will have these two and one will be in section and one will just be normal and clear. This line with the AA is an indication of where we are making this section. So that's what you will be seeing on here. Okay, so let's look at what the component side looks like. So if we look at the components, this is the question that you're actually given. And so what we do with assemblies, we start like we normally do, by first making sure that we can identify each different part. Now remember, these are always given in orthographic pairs. Sometimes just one view is given, sometimes two, and sometimes three. So it's important to identify how many parts do I have. And then we start to look at how to combine these parts into the assembly. So first, if we look at this, we can see that these three components that we have here, they are all three different views of one single component. How do we know this? By making sure that if we line these up, orthographically they will line up. So these three are connected. In the same way we continue and we say, okay, these three are connected, and that is part two. These two are connected. These two are connected. And you continue in this way until you've identified all the parts that we have. Okay, so the next thing you do before you start drawing is can you, from the components that you've identified, already have an indication of which standard components you might have to add to this assembly? Now, typically, there are specific things that we look for. And in this case, when we look at this pin, we can see that there's this information where there's threading from the top of a shaft-like or bolt-type uh, component. And they actually give it to you here as lubrication holes. So you can see that this component here requires lubrication and there's a space here with threading. So this will indicate to you that you'll have to use a grease nipple. So a grease nipple will be a standard component that you need to add here. In addition, on this side there's M16 and here is M16. And you're not quite sure yet, but that might mean that we need to use M16 nuts added at the ends of these components. So those are two standard components that we can immediately identify that could be needed when we are making this assembly. Now remember when we are doing assemblies, we always start from a specific place and we build from there. And it's really up to you where you want to start in terms of with which component you want to start. And wherever you start, as long as you go through the process systematically, you will finish with the final assembly. What is very important though, is that you start with the section drawing because the section drawing is usually the view that has the most marks. So if you only finish the external view and you don't see anything or you don't have time for the section view, that's a lot of marks that you, that, that you lose. Now, if you look at the schematic that we were given, the schematic already gives you an indication of how these components are assembled. So for example, if you look at the schematic, in relation to uh, this view that we have, we can see that, specifically looking at this, we can see that we have this arm component, and this is the same shape as this, it's just turned around, which means in your final assembly, 
This component will show, but it will be turned in the opposite direction. If, if you can only identify one, that's enough. But you could also, for example, say this part looks like this, for example. So these look the same. And that might give you an indication, at least on a bigger picture, where these components will be connected to each other. So that gives you a start to start with. And then you can decide, OK, I'm going to start by drawing this arm. I'm going to start by drawing the base. But before you even start, it might be a good idea to just see how these components fit together. If you say that, OK, I'm going to start with this arm, let's look at the information that we have around this arm. And by information, we usually look at the circles, like the diameters of the circles, and the distances between center lines to try and see what we can fit together. So here we look at this arm and we see that we have two things here. We have an inner diameter of 16 and the outside is 30, but that hole in the inside, I can put something in, in there and that diameter is 16. And here at the bottom I have another hole and that diameter is 19. The lengths are given here, so the hole of 16 is 30 long and the hole of 19 is 52 long. So now I can look at the rest of my components to try and see what will actually fit into these spaces. So I go to the other components to see if I can find diameter 16, diameter 19, and with matching lengths. So if I look at these pins that I have, there's quite a couple. The first one here I see there is an M16, so there is something that the diameter is 16. So that means that can be a component that fits in there. There is also a diameter 19, like I have at the bottom. So this component both has 19 and 16. Then for the, the bottom one, I have 19 and 16 again. So these pins, both of these pins could fit in either of these holes. Do I have anything else that has the same diameter? This one does not have 16 or 19. It has 16 threading, but it doesn't have the 19, so it could indicate that something can happen there. The other thing that I see here is this bush, and I have an inner diameter here of 19, not an outer diameter of 19. With an inner diameter of 19, it might mean that this 19 connects to one of these. Now, this is where, this is where it becomes really important for you to understand how the standard component works. If I have a bush with these lubrication rails running through here. Which of these two components would I rather want to put this around? This one or this one? So because the bush has these lubrication rails and because I have the lubrication holes here, these two would be the two that are combined. And so that means that this component will have to fit around this pin and the 19 that I have here on the inside will fit on the 19 that I have here on the outside, which immediately disqualifies this pin for this bottom hole. Because now if I have the bush around there and I have the 19 on the inside, it will expand and now be 25, and that does not fit through this hole anymore. So immediately I see that this pin will not be the pin that fits through here, and the only other option that I have will be this one. So now I have that this pin is most likely the pin that will fit through here, which means that the opposite one, the 16 one, that can be this one that fits into there. Now again, using your schematic, if you look at your schematic and you say, okay, now I've indicated that the lubrication pin is going to fit through the top and the normal pin is going to fit through the bottom. If I have my lubrication pin fitting through the top and I have my bush around there, when do I usually use a bush? Between a wheel and a pin. Do I have something like a wheel? Yes. Does my dimensions make sense? If I have the bush around the pin, my diameter becomes 25. And the inside diameter of this wheel is also 25, which means that in terms of diameter, these three components fit exactly. Now, do they fit in terms of their length? If I look at the total length of this bush, 42 plus 12 is 54, and the inside of my wheel is 54. The space that I have on this pin is 54.5, which means there will be a small gap that's placed um, 
when I add the bush and the wheel on there. Okay, so now using my schematic, I can see this hole that I have here, that is a diameter of 16, right? And on this side, if this is now my wheel, so this will be the, just the schematic form of the wheel, I know that the thicker part of this pin needs to go through this part of the wheel. So the 19 diameter part of this pin needs to go to the wheel. Do you see that this pin will be turned around, so it's not going to be drawn like this, but I'll actually turn this pin around to have the 19 side on this side and the 16 side on that side, because that's the orientation that my schematic demands. Okay, so once you've gone through just a couple of logical steps to see how the connection needs to look, you can start making the drawing. So let's start by saying, we're going to start by drawing this pin because now we've identified how this pin will need to be drawn. And what we do is we draw this pin exactly as it looks on the screen. Okay, but now remember we're turning this around. So even if it helps you, you can turn your page around and that might help you to, to make sure that you draw this correctly. So we start by drawing the spin exactly the way that we see it on the, on the drawing with all the detail that we have. So making sure I have all the information that I need and I'm drawing proportionally correct. Okay, so all the threading detail you can always erase later as we add on components we might need to erase.